Okay, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Gabby Petito. And I know we're jumping the gun on this, but uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of um, Black Coffee and Crime. Um, it's just two of us here this week. Randy is on the sick and shut in list. So um, as part of our church announcement, keep, uh, keep her in prayer. And uh, hopefully she'll be able to join us uh, again for our next episode. This episode, we're going to talk mainly about Stephanie St. Clair, the queen of Harlem, the queen of yes. the one that played with the big boys and won. Um, but we're also, I mean, there's been a lot of, a um, lot of things in the news recently, but the thing that hit the media in a frenzy in this past week is the disappearance and now the murder or homicide, maybe suspected homicide of Gabby Petito. Now listen, who is she? Mm -hmm. And why? Why has there been such concentration of media? I mean, I did not know who this girl was four days ago, okay? Now I will be honest, today is um, September 20th, okay? So four days ago, I didn't know who Gabby was. But I you said I, four. I didn't know two days ago. I mean, uh, yeah, I didn't know. It's just that she kept popping up on my TikTok, and I was like, "What? Well, who is she?" So I, then I kind of did a little digging, and I was like, "Oh, I'm sad." I, I didn't. I mean, I didn't know, and I was like, "Well, who is this?" And you know, it was like, you know, she's missing. This missing girl, young woman, uh, missing. She went hiking with her boyfriend, and he came back without her. So I was like, "Oh, that's kind of messed up." You know, immediately I'm thinking foul play because who goes camping and comes back without the person? <clears throat> um, and then it just turned into this huge thing. So I'm like, is she like the daughter of someone or relative of someone? Mm -hmm. No, she's just regular old vanilla white bread, white girl from Colorado. <laughs> Where was she from? Oh, she's from New York. Um, uh, uh, Newark. Suffolk County, New York, it says. And she is okay. This is just I'm looking at Wikipedia, y'all. Um, because I'm not trying to go through all these articles, but it says that uh she's from Suffolk County, New York, but her family lost contact with her late August in the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. She apparently went there with her boyfriend, um Brian Laundry. And um, mm -hmm. she was reported missing September 11th. So she, they hadn't been in contact with her since late August, but she, they didn't report her missing till September. I don't. Yeah, that's off. Why did it take y'all two weeks? Why did it? Why? Why? Why, why so long? In in a national forest, so or national park, so you would think that it would be a little expedient to get started like looking for someone who's lost in the national forest um but uh so the boyfriend apparently she got stopped by they got stopped by some park rangers or something and it was like a domestic thing and she was acting erratic and they were thinking that she was the abuser abusing her boyfriend and there's kind of like some little controversy about that like was she the aggressor or was he the aggressor was you know was she being gaslighted or whatever um in any case uh, the boyfriend went missing. Uh, his family was like, we haven't seen him. He wasn't giving up any information. We haven't seen him now. As of two days ago, he left mm -hmm. his house, his parents' house, and went to the forest somewhere and just kept walking. And so the FBI got involved and all these volunteers got involved to go look for him. They haven't found him yet, but yesterday uh, on the 19th, they did find a body a female body um, in the national forest. And I think they have confirmed that it's her or very strong suspicion that it is um, Gabby. I think today they confirmed that it was her, but they still haven't found uh, the dude. Uh, what is his name? Brian. They still haven't found Brian. I, I just, you know, I was just like, okay, but who is she? Like, who is this girl? You know, I, listen, I'm, <clears throat> I am she was just traveling. <laughs> I am the mother of a 23 year old. 
and oh, my sister says she's a YouTuber. Oh, okay. A, like a travel blogger or whatever? A travel blogger? She was a, a blogger of living out of her van, the life of living out of her van, and was blogging about that as she traveled, so. Okay. All right. But, Brittany, what was the name of the, the killer? Because we did it. What's the name of those killers that was in the van that was getting on people, you know, and killing them? They was on the van. We, we did the story. They were the ones in the van. They were two guys, uh, two white guys, but they were in the van and they were killing them young girls and stuff like that. I don't know why this came to my mind, but. I don't know. We're going to have to dig through the crates to find that. Okay, we're going to dig through the crates because we okay. did the story. Because I was like, ew. There was I live, somebody living out of van, but we're going to dig through the crates to find that. So, okay, so she's a, so this is why the whole media blitz about this. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, like I said, I'm the, the mom of a 23 year old who is very adventurous, um, who wants to climb rock faces and mountains and go into um, Yellowstone by herself, for God's sakes, by herself, this child wants to do this. So I get like, the the parents uh worry but listen if my daughter goes anywhere and i don't hear from her in 24 hours first of all i'm on my way to the last place i thought she was mm -hmm. second she's immediately missing person i don't want to hear oh she's she's an adult she no 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 nope. i don't care y'all need to find her right now she's missing right now you know but one of the things that I did see in TikTok videos um, and on other social people in social media commenting was that, where is this attention for women of color and indigenous women? Mm. Uh, one TikToker, and I did save the video, so I will try to embed it or post it on um, our social media, which is uh, Black Coffee Crime on Facebook and Instagram, most likely Instagram, I'll post it on Instagram, um, was saying that there was like 700 indigenous women who went missing from 2010 until now. And they're still missing. 700? And they're still missing. Um, and another TikToker said, and I saved that video too, says that, um, you know, black women make up 7% of the population, yet 10% of all missing women are women of color, black women. Where's the FBI? Where's the FBI? In Chicago, there is a crisis of missing black women yes. <laughs> and black girls. Where's the FBI? Where's the media? In Atlanta, Atlanta happens to be one of the largest areas for human trafficking more women girls especially women of color are kidnapped and trafficked out of atlanta than anywhere else in the u.s where's the media coverage and again if it was my daughter i want everybody in. i want this the fbi dea at everyone FBI, everybody so i don't i'm not faulting the parents and i'm not faulting people wanting to, her family, friends wanting her to be found, but I want you to apply that same pressure when it comes to the darker hued women. That's all I'm saying. Because if it was my daughter, I don't give a damn what color she is. I need y'all to put all the pressure on everybody. But I also need, just like they were standing outside of Brian Laundrie's house, I need all of y'all to stand right. I need all of y'all to stand outside the suspect who I think might have my daughter put pressure on him and his family to bring them out. Like, I need that kind of pressure. I need strangers who have no idea who my daughter is, no idea what she looks like, but I need strangers to put pressure on law enforcement. I need you to put pressure on this man's family. I need you to put pressure on his friends and his, in the same way. Like, I need all, I need this energy. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm very, very Period. sorry that, um, and yeah. she's not coming home you know no one, no one wants that that she's not coming home and the thing is that i, I don't even know why he, like why she died you know how did she yeah, there, there's there's nothing hold on jen did they say how she died no yeah no details you know this that's our i assistant. didn't see any that's, either that's jackie's <laughs> assistant jen last week um that's her uh 
our uh, fact checker Jen over there. <laughs> and last week we had a cameraman. Little Michaela was our camera mm -hmm. person. She's in training again this week, so she's gonna yeah. get she's, she's gonna do better. She's she's been following, she's been with Jay Springer. Yeah, she's and Mari. Yeah. She's been too long, so she her energy is kind of kinetic, and so she's just all over the place. We need you to be still. She don't know how to do that yet. So, um, yeah, I, I'm interested to find out because you know there was the arrest, or no, that they got stopped by the park ranger. So, I'm interested to find out like what happened. What happened? Like the park ranger knows he was there. You know what happened in their relationship? What happened to her? Um, did he kill her? Was it an accident? And that's the thing, they don't know because they can't find him. So, you know, it'll come out um, in the next couple weeks. But yeah, I have very little information about Nope, yeah. They don't really say who was the aggressor when they talk about the domestic dispute that happened on August the 12th either. Yeah. But I imagine, you know, being in a van, traveling with someone, there's lots of tension, you know, and stuff like that. So I get that, but I don't know if it's enough tension to make me want to kill you. Like real, for real, for real, kill you. So I don't know. We will definitely find out. So it's because it's everywhere. It's going to be good. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's everywhere. So, um, yeah, we had to get Gabby um, out of the way. Also, um, it, you know, the past couple of weeks, couple of celebrity deaths, Michael K. Williams, uh from the wire um, boardwalk empire lovecraft country um, and which he, if you if you haven't watched the one season that they have destroyed us our little feelings with if he didn't i mean the wire alone i mean you don't need nothing else. but when i say he act he's brilliant he was a brilliant actor brilliant in everything that he did you know what let me tell you when i watched the wire and the wires came out what 20 years ago so almost 20 mm -hmm. years and you did not have gay or homosexual mm -hmm. black male characters as main characters as masculine and as toxic as omar was so you yep. have this character who comes out of prison and everybody is scared of Omar. Right. Omar comes down the street, Omar don't care. Omar killing people, grandma, he don't even care. Okay. He shot up to my grandma. Like he, he don't even care. <laughs> no, 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 nothing. He got the shotgun up under, you know, and he's walking through the street. Everybody's hiding their stuff. Like he's Debo and everybody before Debo was Debo. And he comes out of prison with a boyfriend. Yep. And he's unapologetic about it. About having said boyfriend. That was so groundbreaking because you had these masculine men as, you know, as fans of The Wire watching this and they're like, you know, he's well, he's gay or whatever, but you love him though. You love Omar because you see him it's no longer about him being gay anymore or having this male lover. It's Omar. Like if you can, mm -hmm. I think at that point, because most, you know, before in the media and in film, if you had a black gay male character, it's very effeminate mm -hmm. uh, and, and kind of a caricature of what you think a gay man was supposed to be. Plus some because of the black stereotype, you know, stereotype of black gay men. Well, here you got Omar. He's as masculine as he can be with a scar on his face. He don't smile. He's ruthless. And Michael K. Williams played that part so well. He was very unapologetic about playing it. Was. Um, didn't care. Didn't Nobody care thought. about what kind of stigma he might have for nope. playing a gay character. And I think that that really helped. And one of our favorite shows is uh, Pussy Valley. Mm -mm. Pussy Valley, should I say uh with little murder like you got another character who was who was you know a gay character but you know he's in closeted but everybody knows he's gay but then you have the actor themselves mm -hmm. he's very unapologetic about playing that type of a character he sure he does not care 
And I don't know if he attributes it attributed to Michael K. Williams, but you can draw that connection that if mm -hmm. there hadn't been an Omar, there wasn't going to be a Lamar. There wasn't going to be, Alfonso wouldn't be able to play that character without Michael K. Williams having played Omar. So true. He wouldn't. He, so he wouldn't true. Allow, he wouldn't allow, even, you know what? Even, um, uh, oh my God, what is his name? In the, the guy from um, True Blood. What was his name? <gasps> oh, uh, he passed away too. Yeah. Um, uh, shh. Let me ask my assistant. Jenny, <laughs> what was the name of the guy on True Blood, the, the gay one? Lafayette. Yes, even Lafayette. Effeminate, but very masculine. You, you know, at the, he was telling you, I'm always Ooh. a man and I'm going to whoop your ass if you come over here. But Ooh. I feel like what I like and do what I do. You, again, could not have been played without mm. an Omar. As a black male, as a black male, and being a black male, a uh, gay male in, in film, you wouldn't be able to do that. So uh, and then, then today, AJ mm. Johnson, who played Ezel, famously played Ezel in Friday passed away. I believe he was 54, 55 years old. I'm not sure what mm. the cause of death is on AJ Johnson. So um, mm. we're losing them, y'all. We don't know why. We're just losing them. <sighs> We need to hit that time. Give them the was, flowers, y'all. Yes, and really quickly. So I was talking to one of my cousins. Uh, my family had to get together. They had their family reunion this year. We need to go. And I was FaceTiming my family, me and my sister, to say hello to everyone. And my cousin goes, hey, Jackie, what are y'all talking about on the podcast next week? I was like, what? My cousin Roy is about 6'3" solid 250 pounds mm -hmm. solid muscle man used to be a cop you just keep that kind of stuff and i'm like what so people are like what podcast he was like oh no no her and brandy's they talk about you know crime and other bullshit you know they tell you what's <laughs> going on i was in total shock I could not, and I hardly even get a chance to talk to him. We grew up together. We're first cousins. We love each other, but life, you move on. You got to do what you got to do. And right. it made my heart smile. So, Roy, thank you so Keep much. Watching. You tune in every week, and I am so grateful and so appreciative. And you even know everyone's name, because normally, you know, when you're cousins, you're like, hey, this is my cousin. But he knew that y'all were the brands. That's what he called y'all. Thank brands. you. We appreciate it. So that's a big it. deal. So yes. thank you. So thank you, Cousin Roy. Love Hopefully, we keep you uh, interested every week along with all of our um, all, you know, subscribers to YouTube. So you can always hit that like button on any of the episodes. Um, hit the notification button. So if we, you know, when we post, you, you know what time we post and you can jump on. Um, we had some comments from an episode. Uh I forget which episode it was, but uh, we were talking about female circumcision and we started comparing female circumcision to male circumcision. And um, there was something I said in the episode right in the very beginning that you were laughing at, Jackie. But oh, then <laughs> you, you laughed at something about it. And then when we started talking, yeah. So then we started <laughs> talking about, yeah, you got trouble start talking about the female circumcision like it's like you had no reaction so the commenter was like she reacted to male circumcision but she has zero reaction to the female circumcision and it was at the very beginning of the episode so i was like um i I'm like you know real. and and i not and i said i replied in all fairness i think it's she was reacting to something that i said about male circumcision not no. yeah i said something stupid so she actually should have been saying something about me. I should have been in the one truck because I said something. Oh, sorry. Yeah, please don't ever think I don't take feminism. Yeah. Please don't. Because yeah. I am very much so for feminism. Yeah. So I um, you know, I, you know, it wasn't like, you know, I was just like, in all fairness, I think she's just reacting to like a nervous reaction to what I said about the subject. Not oh, man, what episode was that? I gotta go look at it. Yeah. Um oh, I'll I'm so know. sorry. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But I'll, I'll let you know. You said episode 11? No, it wasn't episode 11. Oh, was it, what episode number one? <laughs> so, <laughs> <Let me look. laughs> 
now that I'm now I'm here. Let me look. Uh, no, not that one. Episode eighteen: Ivan Hill, the sixty freeway killer. Wow. This is this is the comment. So the lady with the glasses screamed at male circumcision, which is normal, but she didn't have any reaction to female circumcision. What the fuck? So <laughs> I, you know, I commented like, hey, I just think it's a reaction to what I said, nervous reaction to what I said to her or what I was saying, you know, not. Um, I got completely distracted by all of this. So, yeah. Got completely distracted by the other, but okay. Okay, I'm, 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 let me get out. This is why you have total control over our comments on but, YouTube. But you can comment too. Uh, no. Okay, I won't. I'm going to comment. Now, the, not the, the lady who I swear I would that was not the intention, and I'm very sorry. You probably aren't watching us anymore. But if it came out that way, I, it was not. But the person before it. Oh, the person who said that y'all need to hurry up and get to the part because this is why I don't watch y'all. We show. literally say if, if you. Yeah. So I, I, I did respond to that. But like, I'm so um, sorry. I would not laugh or joke about anything like that. Um, I think that what happens is I'm delayed from jokes a lot of the time and it looks bad. And I have to apologize. Some, and now, uh, since that was like almost a year ago, now, when I notice I'm laughing, I'll be like, oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to laugh at that. Yeah. You know, because I really am sorry, but I would never but laugh. Then, you know, but so then it's most of the time it's a reaction to me. <laughs> I say some real off-color stuff, and then I just keep talking, and then it catches you, and you're like, wait, did she? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it literally works like that for me. Yeah. No, literally yeah. works that way. I literally go, mm, did she just? Yeah, so in all honesty, it was probably my fault that, that she laughed because I probably said something really stupid because um, that's just what I do. Um, and also we had a new comment uh, from episode 27, but uh, the commenter, uh, that was the Nico Jenkins episode. She says, I love your channel. You girls rock. So thank you, Michelle, um, for, for watching. We do appreciate that on watching any of our episodes. We appreciate that. Uh, and also if you have any suggestions for episodes, uh, hit us up on Facebook and Instagram at Black Coffee Crime or comment on any of the uh, videos. All right. So let's talk about the Queens of Harlem. Um, I have always been fascinated with organized crime. Like forever, 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 forever. I think it started, of course, with The Godfather. Um, I watched The Godfather when I was just like a tot and Sonny Corleone is my favorite fictional mafia character. Uh, I cry every time I see the, the scene when he's shot down in the um, guard booth, like I'm devastated every time. But so my fascination over the years has just grown and grown and grown and grown. So I love talking about organized crime and rooting for the bad guy, really just rooting for the bad guy because Literally, it is the underworld. So what happens above in corporate America also happens below in the crime world. And so these guys are just as or smarter and better at business than any CEO um, of a Fortune 500 or even Fortune 100 co uh, companies. Um, and very rarely in organized crime do you see a person of color. And you lost weight. Huh? I'm sorry. See, say? this is the problem. See, my mind process is too slow. I was looking at the episode. You first wait. Girl, that is a juvious place. No, it's uh, not. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to see. That's why I said that because foundation stick. No, it's not. Congo. It is that not. Did something to this right here. Okay. Is that, no, no, it's not. Go that ahead. is, again, juvious place not. in Solar Congo. Just want to put that out there. Okay. All right. So sick. I, <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to give the credit where the credit is due. So thank you, Juvia, because every week. 
if you've been watching us for a year now, go look at that episode now since it is of discussion right now. I was going to write this book, apologize to the lady, but I don't know if I should do it yet. From but anyways, yeah, on the one we were just talking about because that's what okay. I was looking at. Just kind of glancing through it. And you do not, your face does not It look as full as it's looking like now. It does not. And it's not because of Juvia's place, which has beautiful makeup, by the way. But it's not that. In all honesty, I don't think I was using Juvia's place at the time. So it's still my <sighs> All right, move around along. Okay, so. <laughs> so again, so in the crime world, especially in the, you know, turn of the century, of the last century up into the 1950s, mm-hmm. um, you don't have a lot of, people of color. And when I say people of color, I'm talking about black people because Italians and Jew, sometimes the Jew, Jewish um, mm-hmm. uh, crime figures were people of color as well. But we're specifically when we say people of color in the crime world and that particular crime world, black people. You didn't have a lot of uh, black figures in, um, in those circles because it was very inclusive and quite racist. Uh, even anti-Semitic. So, and that was, I think, part of a reaction to the, what was going on in America when the immigrants came over. You know, you have immigrants, especially in New York and, you know, in the North, because this is where this happened, in the North. You have immigrants coming over from Europe, from Eastern Europe, and they're competing for jobs in space. Right. So they're in tenements. And by design, they are in segregated neighborhoods. So you have the Italians, you have the Jews. Now they're neighboring, you know, they're bordering neighborhoods. But you have certain groups of people, certain races, ethnicities inhabiting certain neighborhoods and they protect them. And you still see that if you go to, you know, certain cities in the north where you'll have the Italian neighborhoods, the Spanish neighborhoods, the Jewish neighborhoods, Irish, Russian, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that started. So you have this division. And then, of course, in America at the time and still now, but more so then you could really, you know, these people could identify as white. Some of them could. And so it was easier to put black people on the keep bottom, black people on the bottom rung because you're competing for jobs. So of course you're going to identify with the oppressor because you don't want to be as oppressed as them. So this was mirrored uh, in regular society as well as in the underbelly, the crime society as well. So you have the five families. And if you're familiar with the organized crime, there's five Italian crime families, right? Hey the five families and there's a book called the five families you really should check that out if you're interested in uh organized crime um it's huge it's huge ass book but (laughs) um so yeah and and the bigger you have the the lucchese family um it's not the gambinos just yet it wasn't the wasn't the gambinos um luckily luciano didn't have a family if anything he was associated with the lucchese um so you have these five families, and I'm not going to go through them because I probably can't remember all five of them. But you have these these families, and they control everything, and they yep. are they, they become the commission. Uh, Lucky Luciano um, recognized at a certain point that you have these crime families who are from Sicily. They're fighting against each other, and they're bringing a lot of attention from politics, from politicians, and the police, and they're losing money. So he says, okay, you know what? We need to consolidate. We're going to come become the commission. No one gets killed. You're going to be bosses of your own family. No one gets killed without consent from the, the bosses. Um, of course, he was the boss of bosses. Um, and, you know, everything has to go just like a, a, a board, a, you know, a corporate board. This is the way these things were ran. And one of the things in the Italian mafia is that you had to be Italian or Sicilian Sicilian, really, to be a made man. You could not be black or Jewish. You had to be Sicilian. And even though uh, Lucky Luciano's right-hand men was Meyer Lansky and Bugsy Siegel, they were Jewish, they were not really a part of the Italian mafia. They were just associates. They were never part of the mob. Never. They were never made men. How they're working, you don't even get in there. 
Right. Well, they true. made the money. They made the money. Bugsy was an enforcer. <clears throat> Meyer Lansky was the money man, but they were never part of the mafia. Um, and lower down on the totem pole were black gangsters. Okay. So mm -hmm. th they didn't really do business with black people at all. Didn't do business with black people. Um, because you just they just they just didn't. It was kind of like beneath them. But Lucky kind of changed it. Lucky says this. Well, you might not be a Sicilian, you might not be Italian, but you can make money. So whoever can make money for us, we're good with you as long as you're making money with us. Um, so that's why Meyer and Bugsy and other Jewish gangsters were able to move in the same circles as Sicilian gangsters or mafioso because they could make money. We can make a partnership, we can make money. Now, there was one woman. Now, women in the mafia is like a no-no. You get you got your wives and then you got your girlfriends and you got your mules. Mm -hmm. Ever they never there was never really a woman that competed against them in that realm. But one of them did, and that was Stephanie St. Clair out of Farley. If I tell you this is a bad bitch, this is a bad bitch. Yes. You know, like you talk about you want to be a girl boss. If you're not like a Stephanie St. Clair, you're not really a girl boss because not only are you black, female foreign because she wasn't <laughs> she wasn't born in the US so <laughs> you're foreign and you trying to play with the big boys and you do play with the big boys and you win I'm saying she played with the big boys and win and win so she was actually born um there's conflicting stories of where she was born some say Martinique some place up some say uh places now called Guadalupe which was French West Indies back in the day so Depends on which story you read. Um, but she was born in 1897. She was of French descent, French West Indian descent. At some point during the turn of the century, she goes to France and then to Canada. And then she makes her way to the mm -hmm. U.S. She has this boyfriend and he tries to pimp her out. Yes. That didn't work. So then, did she shoot him? I think so. I think she shot him. I'm double checking. Shot yep, him yep, yep, three yep, she years. shot him. <laughs> yeah, she shot him. The one that was trying to pimp her out, she shot him and did like shot him. Years in prison, okay, for shooting this man. Then she gets another boyfriend uh, who is running drugs or whatever. She running drugs and running the numbers. But then she's like, you know what? She got a little money, so she's like, she she got bigger than her boyfriend. She got bigger than him. She had bigger ideas. She had bigger ambitions. So that's what happened technically. Yeah, she's like, I'm I'm out warning you, so I gotta go. So this is where she gets the money to start her racketeering business, her rackets in Harlem. Uh, this is a kind of an aside, but when I, back in the day, there was a movie called Hoodlum, and this is the first time that I ever saw anything about. Queenie, because they called her Queenie. And she was played by Cicely Tyson in the movie. Um, um, Andy Garcia plays Lucky Luciano in there. And is it Andy no. Garcia plays Lucky? I think so. I don't know. You'd be surprised. I've never seen her. Oh my God, you've got to see Hudlow. Yeah, you've I have to see him now. I have to see I meant to this week, but I did not. But it, I did it, see a clip of like, was that Lawrence Fishburne? Yes, he played Ellsworth Bumpy Johnson. Oh, I saw that clip, but I was like, oh, this yeah. makes me want to watch it. Yes. So Bumpy Johnson is very important to Stephanie St. Clair. But in the movie, you, you know, of course, movies take poetic license on what they tell, how they tell the story. So it alludes to her being a madam, because they do call her Madam St. Clair, that she's running girls in prostitution, which could be entirely true because you had to make your money. Okay. Um, but mostly she was running a numbers racket. She was making at some point in the 1920s, $20,000 a week. In the four months, $30,000. Four months, $30,000. In the, in the, the killing it, just running numbers in Harlem. So basically she's running numbers with black people. And one of the things that she did, because a lot of the time uh, Black people weren't allowed to have bank accounts, 
So she did like this alternative investing thing uh, where she, you know, she's basically running the numbers. Like, you know, you give me your money, mm-hmm. I'm going to put it here and you get this much back. It was entirely illegal, but she did it anyway <laughs> because that was the only way that Black people could really invest money and try to get it back. Um, she also did illegal gambling and all of that. And when we say running numbers, it's kind of like a lottery system. Like you go to your person on the corner, you give them these numbers, you give them this money. If your number hits, you go back and you get your change back. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, the house always wins. You know, that's just the way that works, you know. Set up. And she was very successful at doing this. I mean, that was her niche. She she that, she that owned it. Um, of course, you know, the big boys in the mafia, they 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 noticed what she was doing. Uh, and a couple of times they tried to, you know, hone in on what she was doing, but she always was like, nah, this is me right here. Stay your ass over there in Brooklyn. Stay over there in Queens. I got Harlem. And she owned it. I got Harlem. And her biggest enforcer was Ellsworth Bumpy Johnson. Say the um, <laughs> who, after she retired, became the, the guy to talk to in Harlem. But anyway, uh, she also was like a civil rights activist because she was giving like banking information and legal information to the the community. Like, so she was like, even though she was doing gangster shit and it was illegal, she was also empowering her community, which of course the powers that be hated it, hated it. Um, They, you know, they would try to shut her down at every turn. She started to take out ads in the newspaper. To, to push information into the black community about money, their Maybe. rights, all of these things. She started to push um, information. At some point, she got arrested. They they arrested her because she was doing too much. You know, she was she was putting way she was too much about money, moving too much. And, uh, talking about corrupt cops and how she was were, paying them. She has well, she had a whole lot of <laughs> yeah. She's paying the cops. You know, she's passing them envelopes like you know, all the other gangsters too, to turn, you know, turn the other cheek. But at the same time, she's paying them, but the other cops are coming in on her territory. She's like, so y'all need to do something, giving you money, but y'all not doing nothing. So she started putting finger on them. Like, so she starts telling like, you know, so she got arrested. Um, I forgot char- what charge she got arrested for, but she did like nine years. She did like nine years in prison. Uh, um, uh, trumped up charges. Yeah, so they just, they just, they got her and let me uh, pull this up. Yeah, Trump, trumped up. Yeah, they got her and um, I think she did nine years in prison that time. Mm-hmm. Um, for those courts. Yeah. yeah. So basically... Even though she did some time in prison, um, she got a lot of people fired. So she did some time in prison, but she also had, you know, there were some changes made because she just wouldn't shut up. She started, she she was talking about kickbacks from all kinds of police officers and judges and everybody. So she's telling on everybody. Now, (laughs) she does her time and then prohibition ends. So prohibition was from like <sighs> early 20s and until 1932, I believe. And basically, that's where the mafia made their money. They were running liquor, okay? With prohibition now, everybody wants to drink. Now, if they can't, it's illegal. So they're running liquor from all over the place, from Jamaica, from Cuba, from Canada, everywhere. This is where the money came in. Well, when prohibition ended, it kind of dried up because... You can go buy liquor at the store now. You know, it's, it's yep. a big thing. So they tried to get her to give up her business in Harlem. Uh, take up, take over her gambles. Okay. They tried yep. to get her, her bit to give up her business in Harlem. And the biggest one that um, really, really, really tried her was Dutch Schultz. Now, if there's ever a nasty character in crime history. Dutch Schultz top five for me. Dutch Schultz type top five worst 
mafia criminals to me. Like, I can't even like the guy, you know? <laughs> I, I, I have a weird fascination with Lucky Luciano, uh, Tommy Lucchese, um, even uh, Bugs Moran. I don't even know why I like Bugs Moran out of Chicago, but I like Bugs Moran out of Chicago. But Dutch Schultz, it's horrible. Just horrible. But if you see Hoodlum, I think that's where I got my like Your vision. My vision of <laughs> Dutch Schultz. And then watching documentaries about him. <clears throat> horrible he um he was jewish he was a russian jewish jew uh russian jew and he basically strong-armed everybody everybody and of course when you had a rival from a different gang um you took him out and since he wasn't a part of the commission because he wasn't italian or sicilian sometimes he didn't really think he had to go by the rules you know, mm. like, so he's like look, I'm not even a part of this. Why should I have to listen to you? I'm going right. to do my own thing. So he was going against the Irish, the Sicilians, and everybody else. Nobody liked Dutch Schultz. They did business with him, but no one really liked this guy. Uh, so he tries to encroach several times in on um, her business. She fights him. She fights him. She fights him. She fights him. And finally, uh, she gets him raided. She gets him raided and um, he loses about $12 million in the 1930s, which today's money is almost $200 million. Yeah. He lost $12 million in a raid, which is in today's inflated prices numbers would have been almost $200 million that she took from him basically. So, no surprise, he's out for blood. <laughs> you know, no surprise, Dutch is out for blood. So, basically, he's just, you know, he just puts all, all kinds of pressure on her. And um, she steps away from her business. Like, she's like, she can't take it anymore. You know, she just can't fight. She's fighting against the Italians, and she's fighting against Dutch. So, so what she does is... She gets her enforcer, Ellsworth Bumpy Johnson, to take over for her. And he negotiates with the Italian mob to take over the numbers racket. And he gets a percentage of the proceeds from the racket. And that way they can uh, fight off Dutch Schultz from being, from taking over Harlem. Um, so he, you know, he takes it over and, um, you know, she retires basically. She she stays pretty much. The you know she kind of goes legit. She keeps up her civil rights thing. Um, she gets married. Now we'll talk <laughs> about who she marries in just a second. This is the weirdest damn marriage. Um, but Dutch Sch Schultz is assassinated in 1935 in a very very public, um, brutal way. Of course, uh, you die by the gun. You live by the gun. You die by the gun. And he did. Um, he was on the run for a while. Um, he had gotten married, had a son, but he was on the run and uh, he got killed, of course. That well, all, that's because <laughs> that's because Lucian went to his people, the five fan folks, mm -hmm. and here they are, and they were like, Yeah, he was like, Look, he's doing too much, you gotta get rid of him. He's and one of the much. things that he did that really kind of sealed his coffin was they had a rule that you don't go after politicians. Mm hmm. Because it's going to bring too much on the family, on the too much. Yeah. and we're going to lose money. And that's what my, the mob is all about. It's all about money, you know. That's it. it. And you can talk about loyalty and everything like that, but it's it's loyalty based on money. As long as you can bring me money, I'm gonna be loyal to you. But one of the biggest cardinal rules, cardinal sins, was trying to kill a politician. And Dutch wanted to kill. Um, what is this man's name? Dewey. He, uh, he ran for president at some point, but he was like the politician's politician. Like he was like the by the book guy. And um, he was like uh, the, a politician that, you know, very, I think he was the attorney general or something of New York, Thomas Dewey. He was a U.S. attorney. That's who it was. And so he tried to kill him. He had a hit put out on Thomas Dewey. It failed. Of course, 
And then that's when the five families were like, basically Lucky, because Lucky was the five families. Yeah. <laughs> you know. He's the five Lucky, families. Lucky was I'm, the I'm sure he family. just makes them feel like they're a part, because according, he just tried to include them, but he Lucky. already had made the decision. Yeah, he had to go. So he, he, you know, it's it's not, it's never been confirmed that Lucky put the hit out on him, but you know, it is what it is. We already know that. So he was murdered and um, on his deathbed, because he didn't die immediately, on his deathbed, wow. uh, Stephanie, Miss mm. and the Madam Sinclair sent a telegram to him in the hospital. And it was read as, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. And so they're saying that now those are some of the last words that Dutch Schultz heard before he died. Reap what you sow. Reap what you sow. Yeah. Reap what you sow. Um, but by you know, by that time she, you know, by 1935, she was um already retired. Um so you know, as time goes by she you know she's less and less in the limelight as far as her criminal past goes mm -hmm. Bumpy Johnson is the guy he dies in 1968 uh, Madame Sinclair dies in 1969 however before that uh, she gets married to this Sufi uh, Adul to this Hamid. Hamid Hamid he was known as the black hitler he was quite anti-semitic he hated jews i don't understand how she got involved with this type of a person me either based on what i've read about uh sinclair i know she was a civil rights activist and i don't know if it was part of like a uh um Pan-African type of sentiment that that attracted her to this man, but he was very anti-Semitic. <clears throat> um, he was militant. He was the listen. He was the leader of an Islamic Buddhist cult. <laughs> That's don't take that joke, Dwayne. Girl, it, it's a joke because I don't understand. I've never met an Islamic. I've never, person. I've never heard that. But maybe you know, you know, then it got a message another. The because you're seven dealing months. with two different um, belief systems. Yeah, that's why I laughed. So I'm like, what? Wait a minute. That aren't necessarily parallel. I mean, there are some similarities, but they aren't. Because isn't Buddhism more? Peace. Yeah, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how you're worshiping Allah and Buddha at the same time. I don't either. That's two different, two like, different teachings. And if there is someone out there who can explain that to me, because it's two like, different teachings, then I'm I'm willing to listen to or to understand how that works. But anyway, he was yes. the founder of this cult. Um, he was also a philanderer. He cheated. She wasn't putting up with it. He cheated with a fortune teller. Um, which again is not in line with Islamic for sure. The Islamic teaching nor the Buddhist teaching. She's a Yes. Okay. Uh, he marries her, but guess what? They try to embezzle money for her from her. Yeah. Try, the, the new wife, because he marries her. Dorothy Matthews, her, she, what did she call herself? Fu Futang? Fu Futang. Um, they tried to open up some businesses using uh, her, uh, Madam Sinclair's name and her money. Um, she divorced. They were only married for a few years. So she divorced him. Uh, but she shot him first, though. So. <laughs> it's not funny. It is funny. They did. I have to say, have to say it's not funny, but I never laugh. They, they did. We could laugh. It is funny. <laughs> it is funny because you wait, you're going to do all of this. Then you're going to cheat on me with a fortune teller. Then y'all going to try to use my money and my name to try to build y'all something? Open up some businesses. You thought you was going to nah. make the money off of me? With nah. this she said, you're going to leave, but you're going to leave with this bullet first. Hold on. Hold on first. Let me let me go get my well, Hold on. Oh, hold on. 
Yes, hold on. Let me go get my purse. <laughs> I mean, let me get my pocketbook. Let me get my pocketbook. So she shot him. Uh, again, she does. This is when she does the 10 years. This is when she does the 10 years. She, uh, this is the way Brandy said it. She look, shot him. She shot him. Indeed. You know, you're going to take something with you. <laughs> you're going to take this with you. You're going to take this ass whooping on a bullet. Oh. I don't even want to get ass whooping. I want to get a bullet. <laughs> I can get this. You can get this bullet faster than you can get this ass with it. <laughs> Stephanie wow. said, Stephanie said, I am not about to ruffle my fur. <clears throat> not, not feathers, but my fur. I'm not about to ruffle my fur messing with you. <laughs> Just let me get my pocketbook. That's it. And you know she had a fur. She had fabulous claws. Oh, you know uh, she was uh, definitely a fashionista. Um, people talked about how she would. Um, I don't. I don't want this, Lord. Stop that. But people talked about how she would. Uh, she, they, you know, they, like she had an arrogance to her. You know, kind of like an arrogant stride. Um, but I don't know if I would describe it as arrogance because that's a word that white supremacy uses when you talk about black people who have confidence that they were mm. arrogant. Um, but I think I would use, she, she just had this confidence. She had this, they like, they said that she had like this ethereal thing about her. Like she was almost mystical. Um, she, she was, you know, she walked with her shoulders out, like chest out, shoulders back. Um, very and would she not have to? Would she not need to in order to do what she accomplished? You think she could walk around there timid around those men? Yeah. No, she had to make sure that she made herself very present in every situation. She oh, yes. had, to. had to. Oh, yes. Um, and you know, just thinking about her walking into these meetings, um, with these mafia so you're dealing with a woman and a black woman at that so you're already at a deficit as, as far as what society says and then you're playing this game with these men and they probably hate you not because you're black <laughs> and you're a woman but because just because yeah, smart you know, playing outsmarting them at their game and we can't get in harlem Yep, we can't. Exactly this. Those people down there in Harlem are so loyal to giving Stephanie their money that they won't even dare give their money to any to any white person. Even illegally, they won't give their money to white people. Like, how do you that? That's like being loyal to your weed man. Like, nah, I'm not. Mm -mm. Nah, hey, no, nah, I got no. I'm gonna stick beside him. Yeah. I'm gonna stick beside her. That's is that your man? <laughs> is this your man? Yes, yeah. yeah, my man. And, and I'm gonna stick beside her. That's it. You know, like that's how that's the type of loyalty because not only was she, you know, she's feeding their gambling habit and whatever other habits they have. She's also providing for this community. Like she's like, you know, I'm gonna give back. She's like the Sankofa queen. Like I'm gonna reach back and bring one with me. Um, like she's doing this. And so they have this sense of loyalty to her. And then of course, Bumpy Johnson, because even, even though the commission took over the Harlem Rackets without Bumpy Johnson's face being in um, Harlem, they would have never succeeded. So right. have the Italians come in and, and just rubbed out Bumpy Johnson and Stephanie, they would have never succeeded in Harlem. That racket, no. numbers racket would have dried up. Um, there, but one of the things that uh, she lived in this building called the the Edgecombe uh, building, an apartment at Edgecombe Avenue, um, where like most of the prominent Black people lived. So you had Thoroughgood Marshall, who was mm. a Supreme Court Justice, living there. W. E. B. Du Bois living there with Stephanie St. Clair, the biggest gangster in Harlem. Um, one of her neighbors said that, and this is from a Smithsonian Magazine article. Madam Stephanie St. Clair breezing through the lobby with her fur coat dramatically flowing behind her. She had a mystical aura about her and she wore exotic dresses with a colorful turban wrapped around her head. So she was really going in there like embodying being her culture, a queen and her culture. 
Yes. Oh, it which they ooh. She was always doing it for the culture. <laughs> so here she is, black a woman, and she represents her culture. Can you imagine how pissed they were? <laughs> they were so pissed. ahead of her time. <clears throat> I'm talking about they were so pissed. You I know, can imagine they was like, "Here, this be," and she be, and what? You ready? <laughs> Are we gonna do this or no? You know, I could just imagine her walking into the, you know, uh, the social clubs and whatever, cotton clubs and all that. And having one, having to go through the damn back door too, um, to get in there, but still carrying herself with this regal aura. Mm -hmm. like, we're going to do this and then walking out like, you don't want to talk to me, then let's go. Yes, that's, that's I mean, exactly how I imagine her walking in. Probably through a back go. door of some gambling, you know, establishment and yeah. her literally you know women that walk with confidence it seems like it's a beam on you it's a it's a, a glow about you that you just you're just present in that moment and i could just see people just literally looking at her like who the fuck does she think she is and she and she's still that bitch <laughs> that's what <it> <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying she said that, but I'm just saying that's what I think she should have said. <laughs> that bitch, that's who I am. So, um, in any case, she she passes away in um, 1969. Uh, she passed away with quite a fortune. Still, uh, she was quite still quite wealthy um, when she passed. She did not have any children, um, and let's see, her money. She you know she gave her money to. Um, some charities, but basically it probably just went back to um, uh, family members or whatever, but she did not have any children. Um, HBO, a couple years ago, I heard that HBO had optioned um, a movie about her and that Queen Latifah was supposed to play her, but I don't know if I agree with that casting. Mm. Queen Latifah um, playing um, Stephanie? Yeah. I don't know if I deal with that. She pulled that off. I mean, hell well, yeah. I just, here's the thing, though. I'm not saying that she can't pull it off, but she played Bessie. Yeah. Why are you you're right. Because now I got to get, now I would have to separate. You got to erase that in order That's for her to play. You're right. Madam Sinclair. So I, you are so right. Because I would immediately, the second I see it, I'll be like, look at Bessie. Right. <laughs> You've already played an iconic black woman. So in, in, you can't do. Uh, you you also can't do um oh my god uh what's Annalise's name um, um oh shit you can't do her see that you know this, this is what black people do we we talk about other black people based on one name y'all know who Annalise is. Uh, <laughs> That's what we do. So uh, sad. Viola Davis. That's so yeah. sad. And I know that's her. Like, you be like, yeah. And I know that's Viola Davis. And I know she's her. one of my favorite people. But so in I my know head, she at least. But she just, you know, she just played my rainy. So you can't I, do her. It went. <laughs> so I think about TikTok when I think about the like, rain. Um, because you know she said Blake. This guy was like black cheats. And black ass, that's what I like. Because, you know, my rainy was a lesbian. So I always think about that part. But anyways. So was Bessie was Smith. Left? So was Bessie. Yeah, very much so. I don't know. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to think who I would cast. I, I don't know Bessie. if... Um, Angela Bassett could really no, push... Absolutely not. I said she couldn't. I don't think she could push that type of. I listen. I love. Not her. that I don't love her, but I just don't see her being able to push that performance. I don't okay. want Tina Turner playing. <laughs> because this is what I think. I think that every since what's love got to do with it, she has played Tina Turner in every single role. Mm. 
not giving she's giving the same intensity and the same acting skill that she gave in that movie now when she was in waiting to excel as bernadine she was completely different than she yep. was in what's love got to do with it when she got to what's love got to do with it, every role since then she's giving that same intensity and i'm like angela turn it down adjust it I need some adjustment here. A beautiful lady. I love her. Let me run some movies. Let me run some movies through my head right quick. As y'all know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the digression part of our show that we do the (laughs) review. And 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 as usual, uh, I wasn't bold enough to be able to do that, so I gotta go look it up. Okay, so let's look. I'm just gonna look up black actresses. Let's look at her movies. Let's 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 go. Let's do it. Because now I gotta go through what's I gotta do with it and everything below. Carrie Washington can't do it. <laughs> no, I can't get past that. Look, she do that. I can't get past that. <laughs> she can't do it. Um, you know what? <clears throat> she kind of maybe Regina it. King. No, you don't think Regina King can take her off? I can't. You know what? As bad as she is, as Hugh and Riley. That is as badass as she's ever been, in my opinion. I don't think she gets no the, the, when that kind of invoke. I've never really seen her do in movies because mm-hmm. Riley and Huey are amazing. They have those, both that's have, just voice. That's voice. You don't. That's see just her. voice. Okay, and okay, and I'm looking <laughs> for the look, the attitude, and the skill to carry her off. Um, I have a picture of somebody in my head, but I don't know who that is. She's a star. I don't know who she is, but I see her walking. Damn it, what does she play in? I think maybe Lupita Nyong'o could play her. She could. I mean, she has a culture to it. I don't know. Lupita's too nice. What what role has Lupita played when she wasn't just a sweet girl? See, that's what I want. I want the breakout person. I want somebody that's going to kill it. Um, She's known, and I don't know her name. I don't want Taraji. Hell no. Taraji can't do it. We all gonna be thinking about a cookie. Yeah. I so trying hard. to come out of cookie. Uh, bring a cookie out. Oh my God. Who is that girl? It's not... I, I, I see her face, but I don't know what her name is, so I can't even get close. I don't know no movies or nothing. You think Tika could? Tika Sumter? Yeah. I'm really trying to think of the other person, but he could pull pull up in my head. And the reason why, okay, I wish Viola Davis could do her because she definitely could do her. Viola Davis would kill as Stephanie St. Clair. Did you see my ring? Yes. Did y'all see? Did y'all see her? I I don't know why this woman didn't get an Oscar for that. Um, Now, okay, so in Hoodlum, Stephanie St. Clair is played by Cicely Tyson and it's iconic, okay? Go ahead, I'm just looking for the scary. But this would be a movie <laughs> about her. Um, I can't give Angela Bassett. I just can't do it. No. Mm-mm. I don't know. I don't know. She is current. She is new. She's a new face. And she's been on quite a few movies. But I can't think of the movie. And I can see her walking like in the bill. Got Beyonce down on her chair, but they, they just gave it a spot because they don't mean nothing. Um, hell no. And I want her not to be. I want her to be a brown girl. I don't want her be. to look like Halle Berry. I don't want her to look like, um, uh, uh. What 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 Robin Thicke like? What, what was Robin Robin Thicke's the wife name? I don't want it to be her. No, not Rosario Dawson. Not uh. Not and too bad Dawson. Journey ain't got enough pigment because she could probably kill it too. That's what I'm saying. She ain't got enough pigment, you know. Yeah. I think we all love melanated goddesses, but we need the right melanation to be in this movie. Ain't got enough, uh, you know. We I'm need this woman. I'm thinking in my head has pigment. And I'm just really pissed off that I can't think of her name. Well, girl, I need you to get it together. 
I'm looking. I, I can't help myself. I can't help myself. I mean, she is like a breaking out artist. I mean, an actress. And I just cannot remember her name to save my life. I can't even remember the movie. I just remember seeing her on, um, I've seen her in a movie. <gasps> I'm no mother. No one. It is her. Is that her? Who? The one who was Ma Rainey's girlfriend, Taylor. I think that's the woman in my head. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, I'll look up Ma Rainey Black Bottom. Let me look her face. Yep, Jackie that's what's so, Jackie be so intense, y'all. <laughs> That's I who I saw ever, in my head. That's who I saw in my head watch. If y'all ever look at uh her name is Taylor Page. Jackie's face when she does when she does her face <laughs> in the video. She don't really she don't really know she's doing it. And I don't ever take it. I don't ever edit it out. <laughs> ever. Oh, well, she dated Jesse Williams, hey girl. That's me. Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-U-R, page P-A-I-G-E. She might be able to carry off that look. You see him? Mm-hmm. She probably could, huh? She could. She could. I'd give her my vote on that. Probably I would. Could. Mm-hmm. I would. That's, that's, that's a good... You know who else could carry her off? Who? Uh, the 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 Miss Dora Milaje herself. Uh, um, uh, oh Lord <laughs> Jesus! In today's episode, us trying to figure out names most of the damn show. Uh, what her name is? From she plays in um, The Walking Dead too. The, the black lady? Yes. The one who's like a... Yes. Okoye. She plays Okoye in a Black Panther. Ooh. Okay. She could do it. That's 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 my Stephanie Sinclair. Is it the... Oh, the, you said McCoyney, The Her name is Dan- Danny? Danny? Yeah. Danae or she Danae. Is beautiful. Her. Okoye. It's beautiful. Okay. She can do it. Gotta be chocolate sister though. She gotta be chocolate. Somebody, somebody gotta get on it. Let's 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 get on the ball. Wait, you know what? That movie is already in production or starting production with HBO. So I don't know who they will be cast. So yeah. <sighs> it's so, gonna yeah. be good. Yeah, I HBO hope so. always be trying to sneak up on people. Even if Queen Latifah does play her, Queen Latifah will do an awesome job because she's an awesome actress. I'm just saying she's already played Bessie Smith, so you're gonna have that kind of image in your head. And I think that if an actor black whatever otherwise plays too in too many biopics you you just get used to it and it it, it seems like they're playing the same character look at denzel he played malcolm x he played hurricane he played um uh everything everything and so after a while you get kind of you the knife gets dull you know what i mean they actually wanted him to play Jackie Robinson in 42, but the production of that movie didn't start until after they figured, they just kind of said that maybe he's too old for that role, for the Jackie mm-hmm. Robinson role. Of course, he went to Chadwick Boseman. But um, you kind of get oh, used to Chadwick. someone playing these same characters because I think as far as biopics go, Malcolm, I mean, uh, Denzel could have stopped at Malcolm. Mm-hmm. Done. You don't need to play nobody else after that. But if you get, you know, you 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 just dull the knife because we've already seen you in a, in playing an iconic. You gotta test those waters. So I don't know. But if it, even if it is Queen Latifah, I'm gonna watch it. Yes, it don't matter who it is, I'm watching. Mhm. Mhm. So yeah, I'm gonna watch it. Stephanie St. Clair, ultimate bad bitch girl boss, ultimate. I'm watching Hoodlum girl. today too. Watch Hoodlum. If you have not seen Hoodlum, when did this movie come out? Um, this movie came in, I, I want to say the early 90s. Um, it stars, it was directed by Bill Duke. Um, if you don't know who Bill Duke is, um, you need to find out. 
Lawrence Fishburne played Bubby Johnson. Tim Roth played Dutch Schultz. Clarence Williams III played Bub Hewlett, which was Bumpy Johnson's uh, right hand. Andy Garcia was Lucky Luciano. Uh, Vanessa Williams was in the movie. Cicely Tyson played Stephanie St. Clair. Um, let's see here. And Thomas Dewey was played by William Atherton. It came out in 1997. Eesh. Listen, listen. Hoodlum is in my top 10 of crime movies. So, oh. Top 10 crime movies, Godfather being at the top of the list. Um, but Hoodlum is, is, in, is in my top 10. So, oh, wow. Yes. Worth watching, guys. Okay, also, this again, it has nothing to do with this episode. Also, in my top ten, Goodfellas. Do you haven't seen Goodfellas kill yourself? I can watch Goodfellas multiple times. You know, a if you week. If you haven't seen Casino, kill yourself. Because I'm gonna be jamming the Shanti. I don't even know where the line come from. What you? Understand. What do you do? Does he got talk like a? What do you do? Love. Look that movie. And if you don't know that Goodfellas is based off of a true story, then I don't understand why you're here. So is Casino. I mean, Casino is also based off of a true story. Casino. Both. Yes, they are. We could talk about that. Casino is based off of a true story. And of course, it changed the names, but the people are Still there. the story. Still the story. Um, what else is in my top 10 of crime movies? Uh, I have to say, it's, uh, you know, it's another, hold on, man, Jenny. Jenny, what's the name of that movie with the, you probably know, with the, with the, um, the black girl, she was dating the Italian, and at that time, he Bronx was, Tale. yeah, Bronx Tale, yeah. I mean, it's not a, it's a criminal, kind not of, really a crime movie, but, but not, it's like a love story goes black, yeah. white, it's type, but it's yeah. still one of my favorites, still one of my favorites, and what, I have to put this movie on my list, list, even though it's not a mafia film, and even though I really don't like this movie, uh, it is a brilliant film. It's, I won't say it's overrated, but too many people like it for the wrong reasons, and that's Scarface. Um, it's, it's, it's iconic. I don't care for this movie. Uh, I've seen it several times, but it is not one of my favorites. But ooh, it is my ooh, top ooh, 10. Ooh, ooh. Let me the honestly reason. tell you that when I go see my family, the ones I was talking about earlier, we're going to watch Scarface. And we can watch Scarface all night like this. We want See, the reason and why Scarface is... Like, you see this thing? Like, I mean, be hype. Scarface is not one of my favorite movies. And I think I it's not one of my favorite movies. I think I don't like the movie. It's because of the way everyone else likes it. It's the hype. It's the hype. To it. I think people like it for the hype, but not now. The movie is brilliant. Um, and you know the the, the cinematography, like right. all the technical things about it. The story mm-hmm. is good, but I just think it's just overhyped. And so I yeah. think that's why it is. But it is definitely overhyped. But still, that's why. And people call it a mafia movie. I'm like, he wasn't a gangster. He no, it's that. not a mafia movie. So what the hell saying that. And when I talk about mafia movies, people always bring up Scarface, and I'm like, that is not. No, you say God. Yes. Everybody knows you say Godfather. That's that's the mafia movie. Everybody knows that. Can no, I say no. I've only seen Godfather a few times. That's okay. At least you've seen it. Okay, have you seen all three of them? Nope. <laughs> nope. I haven't. Okay, <laughs> I'm not I, gonna lie. I have not seen the third one, and I've only seen part of the second. Okay, you could skip the second one. You can go straight to the third. Second one is second one is just to just to get to number three. It's 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 filler. It's okay, but it doesn't live up to number one, and it definitely doesn't do anything for number three. Oh, so I'm on it. So, I need to watch three. So yeah, um, but you definitely if you know definitely Take this weekend is mafia week. Mafia week. Um, you can also watch the. Um, there's a documentary on um not a film but documentary on danny green who's an irish gangster out of uh cleveland okay irish gangster again i like the bad guy i love danny green i don't know why i like the bad guy <laughs> i don't know why i love danny green but danny green just the story of danny green just, does it for you 
which is awesome. So, you know, in the future, uh, as you know, because we things we don't want this to get stale and do the same type of crime. So we will be branching out and doing all kinds of other stuff, talking about stuff like this, you know, organized crime. So at some point we will address Danny Green, Dutch Schultz, um, the five, you know, the five family lucky and try to bring out all those things that are not common knowledge are not just fodder for everyone mm-hmm. but all those those details that no one really knows about those details and connections that no one really knows about uh, or we think they don't we'll just discuss those so we do thank you for joining us for this episode of black coffee and crime again brandy is missing this week but hopefully she'll be back next week and uh we can get back to business as normal but again we do thank you for- Dr. Bob <laughs> the queen of Harlem. Thank you so much. <laughs> be safe, be blessed, and enjoy that second cup. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what is this? Oh, it's still going.